Yeah, hey, how everyone. you doing, man? Good, how are you doing? Doing great, yeah. great. Excited so, to be with all of you out there today. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for, thanks for tuning in. Uh, so, we're coming to you live on a couple of pages right now. If you're watching this, we're coming to live, live on your personal page, yes. right? Yeah. As well as our My Team Triumph page. So, um, kind of a unique video we're going to do today. It's, it's, it's New Year's Eve. You know, December 31st, 2016. So I wanted to use this opportunity to say thank you to everyone and give a little bit of a recap of the My Team Triumph season. And then of course we're here to talk with Aaron Hunnell, who's a great friend of mine, a, uh, an active member of the U.S. Uh, Army Reserve, JAG officer, right? JAG, yes. And uh, wellness professional and then now author and just all around great dude. So we're gonna talk about his new book. We're here at Fleet Feet Sports in Appleton. He's going to be here from 12 to 3 today and then tomorrow as well, right? Yeah, yeah. so we're, we're finishing 2016 with a bang, kicking off the book, and then we're going to start 2017 off with a bang. That's so right. I'm excited to uh, just have so much support from people such as yourselves. Uh, so thankful for Fleet Feet Sports, uh, Jeremy and Leah, and then everybody that's been so supportive. Uh, whether it's in Facebook or in the running community, um, just so happy to have you as part of my life. Thank you. Right. Yeah, man. Awesome. Well, first off, uh, you know, those of you who are tuning in from My Team Triumph Land, uh, what a great year it's been, 2016. Literally thousands of opportunities for people with diverse abilities to come together to build relationships through this great sport of running, biking, and triathlon events. Uh, we're an organization that focuses on building inclusion. So. All of you out there watching, if you're a fan of our page, and maybe you're an, you've been an angel, captain, volunteer, donor, sponsor, thank you so much for your support over this season. It's been amazing. So many great memories of, of connections being made. Um, and uh, one of those great memories that I have, it's one of my favorites, is really from the Fall 50, yeah. uh, where Aaron and Adam, uh, as angels, guided Captain Katie for 100 miles. They did the Fall 50 back to back, which was crazy, it's an awesome experience. <laughs> and uh, But that's just really one of so many thousands of, of experiences, of opportunities. You know, we believe really strongly that when people with diverse abilities come together, they have a challenge, they have a goal, they're working together through that goal, They, they their lives are improved through that. And Absolutely. So, so we're so excited about that. But like I said, we're here with my good friend Aaron Hano. We're interviewing him at the launch of his, of his first book, called Upwards. Uh, again, if you're in, if you're interested in coming, it's at Fleet Feet Sports in Appleton between 12 and 3 today, so we're doing a little bit of a teaser here. Uh, but so, Eric, let's first start off with just telling everyone in My Team Triumph Land a little bit about yourself. I mean, we've, we've posted a lot of photos and videos, uh, you know, and just updates in general about your adventures with Katie and many yeah. things, but if you, could, if you could just briefly introduce yourself to everyone. Yeah, great. So, hello, my name is Aaron, and uh, I am a veteran. I've been on a couple of deployments and um, what I love about serving is that um, it's given me purpose. It's made me uh, see different perspectives traveling around the world and just being around uh, you know people who might not have as much as, as I have, especially living in this country and what an, what an opportunity it is to have this freedom that we've got. But then I also learned that teamwork is so important and, and you know being in the army has taught me that you know, when you put that uniform on, it you lose like your sense of, of self, and you lose and you gain like uh, like a connection with people that are doing the same thing that are, you were doing. You know, they might have different jobs, but they're all coming together towards one common purpose, yeah. and that to me is extraordinary because you know sometimes we live our our lives so much as individuals. You know, it's like how can I achieve something by myself, or how can I get ahead of somebody, and it. it it kind of and it kind of makes us get competitive with other people, and it doesn't allow us to build strong relationships. So, so being in the military has taught me about how powerful teams can be. And awesome. uh, so, you know, growing up throughout my life, you know, I've, I've had struggles just like anybody else. Um, but, but having purpose through the military has really just changed my perspective and taught me to have gratitude. And, and uh, while I was deployed on my second deployment, I tried what's called a marathon, which is a 26.2 mile run for those of you that don't know. And to me, um, it was like the turning point, although I didn't know it, was the turning point for me in my life because it, I finished that marathon hating it. I was like, I'm never doing this again. Wow. But you know, sometimes life just happens to fall into place when you least expect it. And when you just put yourself out there into the world and just say, you know, I'm just going to become vulnerable to new experiences, 
it changes you. And that's what running did for me, is that it, I started having more opportunities to do some different experiences, and I took advantage of them, and they changed my life. So, um, running, I, when, I, when I was um, running, I came in across this uh, store, Fleet Feet Sports, yep. and- We're here right now. And we're here. And uh, it, you know, it was like all these different puzzle pieces. Have you ever done a puzzle before? Like you know, a jigsaw puzzle, yeah. and you're like, you're trying to take these different puzzle pieces, and you're trying to fit them in together, and you're like, oh, they're not fitting. Yeah. Well, I think life is kind of the same way, where we've got all of these different experiences, and you know, maybe some struggles, maybe some good, and we're sometimes, especially with the struggles, we don't understand how they fit into our lives. But as we continue to, to work through it, we start to see, oh, and we, we, we start taking different pieces of our life and, and find out as, as we continue to live and learn and grow that, oh, they start to fit at the moment that they're supposed to fit into your life. And they fall into place at the right time when they are supposed to fall into place to, to create like a bigger picture. Right. And that's what Fleet Feet was for me because um, I, was, I was here trying to win a prize and I came across uh, this couple Ryan and Laura Grunder, who were talking about uh, doing this uh, crazy run. I'd never even heard of anything like this before. Ryan was gonna run from Kenosha to Appleton, 135 miles. And I'm like, why would you do that? And it's like, <laughs> Good question. It's like, well, it's like, well, I'm not doing it for me. I'm doing it for something greater than myself. And he was running to bring awareness to the veterans that uh, we'd lost um, in Iraq. And Afghanistan, and, I, and he's like, "Well, I'm, I'm looking for some support for from a veteran because I've never, I, you know, I, I don't really know many veterans that could help me." And I'm like, "I'm your guy." And I'm like, well, "What's this organization that you're doing this as part of?" He said, "My team Triumph." And so that started the that started the relationship uh, and introduced me to My Team Triumph, and and it just it kept blossoming, you know. And as I I found out that there was so much more to running than just running, um, it changed me, you know? And the more I did, the more addicted to it I got, you yeah. know? And it was like, it was like an energy that I'd never felt before. And, and the relationship aspect of it, like it just reinforced just my belief in teams and just how powerful they are, you know? So, yeah. so awesome, being in the military, just, just kind of, and, and running, just really propelled me into my life in a really special way. Awesome. Well, if you're just tuning in, we're at Fleet Feet Sports in Appleton, we're doing an interview with Aaron Hunnell, who's an angel and now an author. Uh, his new book, Upwards, is launched officially here today. We've got a copy of it back here. It's going to show it to you. Um, if you're in town and you want to come check it out, uh, we're going to be here from 12 to 3. And uh, we're just telling a little bit about the story, doing a little interview and, and sharing. And, and you know, Aaron, you introduced yourself a bit. I know a lot of the book talks about your story. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I know you well as a friend and, you know, you're like the most positive person I've ever met in my life. You're, you know, you're like, if you're like Superman, which I think a lot of people see you as, you know, here's this guy that's, <laughs> Superman. you know, that's running a hundred miles. He's, you know, he's doing all these things. He comes across as this just incredibly, you know, motivated and powerful and strong. And, and while that's, you know, while I think that's important that I know that you're intentionally trying to inspire people through that, you know, I know that's not your whole story, right? And I think, I think it's important for people to realize that, you know, whether it's My Team Triumph or whether it's, you know, running or whether it's, you know, doing whatever you want in life, um, you know, trying to be, trying to be perfect is not the solution. No. Trying to, uh, you know, you have to understand that everyone comes through a journey and some people might look, some people might hear the story and, and just see you and go, you know, I can't, I can't relate to Superman but I can relate to Clark, Clark Kent. Yeah. So <laughs> tell everyone about Clark Kent. Clark you Kent. You know, give yeah. us, and I know you talk about this a little bit in, yeah. in, your, in your book, you know. Yeah. Give, a, give everyone maybe the, um, you know, what's maybe a side of Aaron Hunnell of Clark Kent that a lot of people don't know about. Can you share that? Share that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so one of the things that I have, uh, I don't know if I would say I always struggled with it, but you know I've definitely struggled with it in my past. Is you know just this this idea of not feeling like I'm good enough. You know, like yeah. like you know if I start to get anxious about something, um, I can't feel that way. If I start to feel like like bad about something, I can't feel that way. And 
what I learned, and I think this happens for a lot of uh, a lot of us in general, especially uh, guys, is that when these these negative emotions start to, to creep up on us, you know, we we don't just we just don't deal with them. We don't um, we don't like become aware of them. We we you know suppress them. We push them aside, and we get really good at numbing the pain with different things, you know. And we just we we, we don't we don't. Uh, try to heal. Yeah, we try. Ignore it. We just ignore it, right? Yeah. We push it aside, and and I practiced that a lot. I got really good at pushing my my true emotions aside, and there were things that I was dealing with um, after coming home from deployments, and it took me to a really dark place. And you know, I started drinking a lot, and it was it was just so tough in life. And you know, I was. I was just, uh, you know, waiting to get home so that I could, you know, drink, and then it, like, literally, so much of my thought was revolving around alcohol, and it was, it was just so tough, you know, and I'm like, I want to quit, but I don't know how, and I would try time after time after time, and what I was doing, and I look back now, and I'm like, wow, I was just numbing the heck out of myself. I was just suppressing all of the emotions that I had. And what I've come to appreciate is that your emotions really are just like you informing you of yourself of how you feel and like what's your current state. Yeah. You know like when you're hungry, what happens? You start to feel hunger, you know? Well it's just, it's an awareness tool that you can use to say is this how I wanna be? Or can I do something different? And as soon as I started allowing myself to even just love and appreciate all that I am and saying that I'm already enough and that I didn't have to be like all these other people or I didn't have to be what other people said I had to be or I didn't have to fix weaknesses that other people said I had to fix and I just appreciated and loved who I, who I am, like that, that is what propelled me. That's what made me realize that I, you know, I can possibly do an Ironman or I could do a hundred miles. It wasn't that I, I needed to, to do those to, to tell myself that I'm enough. It was that I found out that I, I already am enough and that I, I can love myself. And because of, of that mindset, I'm like, I want to go out and experience the world because I feel like the process, you know, so many people want the emotional result after the process. You know, they want to win the lottery so that they can have the money and feel, you know, safe and secure, or they want to lose like a certain number of pounds so that they can feel happy about themselves. Well, life doesn't work like that because you need the process to learn and grow. And that's what I, well, that's what I learned is that, you know, training for a marathon, um, you know, I can't just go out and run 26 miles, you know? Maybe I can now, but I couldn't always. <laughs> you don't just go out and run 26 miles. What do you do? You train, yeah. you prepare for it. And it's just like life, it's a metaphor for life is that you have to go through this process and there's an emotional process that you have to go through too to accept and appreciate yourself. But once you get to that, once you say, I'm already enough, I love myself as I am right now, I appreciate all that I am, that's when you, 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 you unlock a special door and once you take a step through that door into like positivity, passion, and purpose, that's when you start moving upwards. And what I've realized is that you don't, you don't take this, this journey alone. You do it together. That's what it's about. Is that life is about other people, and you know I think that people are just the greatest gifts in the world. I honestly believe that, and and I I care about people so much, and you know that that's something that I think most people probably don't know about me is that I struggled, I struggled accepting that I I cared about people so much because from from such a young age I just always cared about people no matter what what they did in life. I didn't even know them. And as soon as I met them, I already cared about them. Or I saw them, I saw people walking down the street and I just wondered how their day was going. And I felt like I shouldn't because people were like, you know, you're too positive, you're too, you're too happy. And I, I was like, am I? Well, and, and I came to realize that they just saw it as a weakness because with every strength there's a weakness. You know, there's a, there's a corresponding weakness. And, the last two years, I've really just spent a lot of time accepting that I just care about people a lot, and I love that. You know? Yeah, becoming the best version of yourself. Absolutely. And I, and I just love, and I thank you for sharing that. Uh, you know, just about your challenges, and I think, you know, um, a lot of people see people that are very successful and very positive and very energizing. They see 
the, the energy and the positivity on the surface, yeah. but what they don't realize is that usually underneath, and we talked a little bit about this just now, is that a lot of times what people are really good at is also something that they struggle at at yeah. times, you know? And Absolutely. so you, you just shared how like you, you had to come to a place where you loved yourself for who you are, yeah. you know? And, and through that love of yourself, you could you could become whole. It's not that you had to chase something right. to have that love. It's not that you had to have the alcohol or right. run the marathon right. or whatever it is. It's an it's an acceptance of you know. Hey, I do have flaws. Right. I have challenges in my life. You know, um, I don't have to worry about what other people think of me. I'm gonna love myself for who I am, and that's the door to open up, become upward. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And that's what I love. You know, and that's what the the cover is really about. It's it's not about moving upwards by yourself it's about you know enabling and empowering people together and we inspire each other together to move upwards you know love it I, I'm just excited man just life is awesome right now you know yeah. and um, I've really been thinking a lot about just just loving other people and, and for me and I hear this often we can't give away something that we don't have you know so if, if we don't have joy we can't give it away if we don't have happiness we can't give it away if we don't have love we can't give it away so so many people you know and i've been there myself you know with with the struggles in my past but you know so many people are like oh my relationship you know is, is no good it's not going anywhere or you know there's there's like certain things in my life that are holding me back well in order to to really give some of those things away if you want to give away love you've got to first l learn to love yourself if you want to change the world you've got to first learn to change yourself you know yeah. it starts it's it's a very inside out approach you know i was in my car the other day and, and um, this is interesting so i was in my car the other day and i live in we live in wisconsin so it's really cold here and um, i turn on the car and the windows all fogged up right windows all fogged up so it's really cold outside the temperature inside the car is a little different Guess what, what is troubleshooting? What do you what do you do when, when it's like that? All right, when your window's fogged up, your first inclination is to crank up the well, it's to do the defroster or whatever or what? or the windshield wiper or the windshield wiper. You go to the yep. windshield wiper, right? Well, maybe that's that's what I did is I went to the windshield wiper, all right? Yep. And guess what happened? It didn't do anything. No. Yeah. All right, so there was this external environment that's going on, all right? And what I was trying to do is I was trying to change the external environment by clearing the windshield on the outside. But I didn't need to use the windshield wipers. That wasn't changing anything. What I needed to do was change on the inside. I needed to, you know, turn on the defroster. I needed to, you know, do a little wipe down on the inside. And once I did that, using an inside out approach, now I could see everything clearly. You know, awesome. so and that's what I feel like life is about. It's it's not about you know going after all of these things on the outside and and thinking that they're going to elicit this long term emotional like happiness response because it won't. It's got to start inside first. You know, you've got to learn to to be positive, have passion, and live with purpose on the inside first. And then once you learn how to do it inside, it will project itself outwards. Yeah, love it. All right, guys. Well, just a reminder here, we're at, we're at Fleet Feet Sports in Appleton with Aaron Honnell. He's uh, one of our angels, uh, longtime angels. Uh, he's done a number of events with us, and uh, he's now become an author. He just wrote a book called Upwards, and we're at his book launch at Fleet Feet Sports from 12 to 3. So real quickly, just wrapping up here, give, a, give, give the uh, viewers here just... All right, you know what's what can they expect if they if they if they want to read this book if if they want to you know improve their lives what what can they expect from upwards? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, when I wrote this book, um, I didn't want it to be limited to any certain niche. Right? You know what I'm saying? I didn't want it to be like for any like specific people. Like if you if you've dealt with struggles in the past, you know, if this this is the only like this is the book just for those types of people. I mean, this book is for entrepreneurs, this book is for business people, this book is for, you know, just families, anybody who's just looking to make their life better, this book is for you. And I use stories, I use research, and I use analogies to, like, just convey, um, you know, what ideas I have. And I've, I've been working on some ideas uh, one of the biggest ideas, and get ready for this, because um, we're going to go against the grain of, of conventional wisdom, is about having balance in life. Because I feel like 
the term balance is really, for most people, holding us back because just their, the perspective of balance, I don't think it means what people like think it means. Usually when somebody is trying to achieve a state of balance, they're trying to do less, hoping that in turn they're getting more energy. But it doesn't work that way. And I've, and I've, I've realized that a lot, especially like training for a hundred mile run, you know, holding down two graduate courses while, you know, being a father, having foreign exchange students, opening, my, having my own business. On. You know, you just, you've got so many things going on and it's not about having, doing less and trying to have more energy. It's about finding the right things in your life that, that give you that energy, that return on that emotional investment. And so, you know, I kind of, um, I take it apart everything on why moment or why balance is holding us back, and I use uh, some science to say why we need more momentum. And when we focus on momentum, we can achieve so much more. Great. Well, man, thank you so much yeah. for taking the time, and thank you for being so involved and so supportive. And we just, I just love seeing all the adventures and being part of them personally with with you and and uh, Katie and many other captains and, and uh, Adam and other angels too. And so, uh, so again, if you're interested in coming down, we're at Fleet Beach Sports 12 to three today. You're gonna be here tomorrow, 12 to three as well? Yeah, 12 to three tomorrow so as well. So on the 1st, January 1st, it's a great thing to, to when, you know, you're, what is what does your next year look like? You know, what are your goals? You know, how do you build momentum? How do you move upwards? Yeah. And uh, we're just so inspired that um, that we can be part of this journey, Mike and Triumph, and, and personally myself can be part of this journey. And just just want to celebrate you on this. And so, if you can't make it, we'll put a link to the video and link to the uh, place where you can order the book online. I believe you got it on Amazon, right? I have it on Amazon, it. yes. Um, and it's just, also on my website. Okay, and we'll put we'll put a link to the website there so you can learn more about Aaron and then also buy the book. So thanks everybody for tuning in. Uh, thanks again for all your support over the 2016 season with My Team Triumph. Stay tuned in the next week. We're going to do another video live talking to you about what does 2017 look like. We've got a lot of new stuff coming up, a lot of really I'm great. Excited. Some cool new programs, new processes, uh, new ways to connect, uh, new look, um, a lot of biking. There's a little teaser for you. And, uh, and we're looking forward to, to unveiling that and uh, really just uh, getting into the new year. So again, from Fleet Feet Sports with Aaron Hunnell and Christian Jensen, thanks for joining. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.